I received an inquiry from one of the members of my website that wanted to know how to create glossy gold text that can be used on a birthday card. I thought, what a great idea. This is the method I've come up with, but before we do the text, we need to create a document to put the text on. So we're going to come up to File. We're going to go to New. Now, under New, the document type, I selected International Paper. And from International Paper, I selected the size of A4. The background content for the moment is going to be white, but we will be changing it. We're going to click OK to that. The next thing we need to do is to turn this on its side. We're going to come up to Image. We're going to go to Image Rotation. And here we've got the difficult choice, clockwise or counterclockwise. Tough call. Let's go for counterclockwise. Right, using Command-0, zero, Control-0, zero, we're going to go to Fit on Screen. Next for the text. We're going to come over to the toolbox. We're going to pick up the Type tool. Now the type I've selected is the Didot Regular. I just like the name. And you can see there's all the settings. I'm going to click on the document there and I'm going to call it what it is, well, what it will be, which is going to be gold. Now we need to commit this text. If we just come over to the Layers panel here, you can see it's called Layer 1. Just click on the T and there it is, it's now been committed. You can see it's now called gold, which means we can edit the text and we can make it bigger. We can do all sorts of things with it. We're going to double click on the T. You'll notice it's now gone dark. You'll notice as well that my cursor has changed to the move tool. That means we can move it around. But if you press and hold down command or control, holding down command or control puts these little grab handles around it, the transform tool, we can now make it bigger so we can bring it to fit on screen. We can do all sorts of things like this. That looks pretty good. Just releasing command or control. I've still got the move tool so I'm just going to bring it up into that position. That'll do nicely. Right, just clicking on the layers panel. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to change the color of the background. So I'm going to click on the background layer. We're going to come over to the toolbox. I'm just going to click in the window here, the foreground color, and I'm going to brighten it up very, very slightly to that amount there. There it is. I did say it was very slightly, didn't I? And I'm going to click on OK. We're going to press X, which is going to put the background to the foreground. Clicking on this, again, it's going to bring up the color picker. This time, I'm going to change it. The color that I think I'd like to do is something in the a bluey, greeny area, something like this here, a bit of a tealy color. I suppose it is. That there will do nicely. Click OK to that. To apply it, we're going to pick up the gradient tool. I'm going to select the radial gradient, which is the second one in there. You can see our colors. Bringing it over onto our document, I'm going to click down. I'm going to drag it out into this sort of area here, just releasing it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Right, now for the gold text. We're going to click on the gold layer, and we're going to be using the FX, which of course is layer styles. So clicking on this, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to gradient overlay. Now when gradient overlay opens, it's taken on the default colors, but if you click where it says gradient, you may notice that I've actually got a preset for gold. Right, the colors I am using. If I just come down to the stop on the end here, that opens the color. If I click in the window, it brings up the color picker. You can see the position. Now, if you want to produce the same color that I'm using here, type in 986 D00. That is 986 D00. Zero, zero. That will then move it to that position. Click OK. That's the darker tones. If we click on the lighter ones, once again, clicking in the window, this time putting in F6D964. That is F6D964. Once again, clicking OK. Now you may notice that my little stop here, the location, is 35%. You can move it back. The default you'll have when you first do it will be 50. Now what this is doing, it's moving. If I bring it into this area here, or oh, one other thing, let's just click OK for a second. I've got reflected. As a default, you probably have linear. I'm going to leave it like that for the moment. Let's come back to it. Let's click on the stop here. Let's come to the location. Now with this one, we're introducing more of the darker tones as we can see here. So the more I bring this across, Incidentally, just bring your cursor over the word location, move it into that area. You can see it's increasing the darker colors. If I move it back in the other direction, it starts to bring in the lighter colors. I'm going to take it to 
this position we had 35 as the default I'm going to take it to there 27 looks pretty good right once you've done this you may want to save it as a preset so you can use it again all you need to do is click on new now there it is if I just click on it it's called custom which is a bit here I know double click on it there it is there gradient custom let us call this gold and we're going to call it gold too when I click OK to that now when I click on this one we've got gold click on that one we've got gold too all set up as a preset incidentally right click here you can rename it you can also delete it if you no longer require it we're going to leave this as it is because next we're going to apply the glossy look right let's go to bevel and emboss now the method I came up with was to change the technique from smooth to chisel hard I'm going to leave these as they are for the moment with the exception of size which I'm going to take up into uh, as we move it up you can see the way our text is changing just back a bit there 24 that looks pretty good let's come down to this shading because this is where all the bits and pieces are really going to happen uh, I'm going to change the angle I'm going to go for I'm going to type in 90 right that looks pretty good like that the altitude quite like that as it is if you just swipe across you've now highlighted it now you can use the up and the down arrows and as you start to move this you can see it's gone right to the edge there for bring it in you can see it's making a yeah, slight difference. I'm going to take it back to, I'm going to leave it at 31 for the moment. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to come down. We've got glossy contour, bit of a clue here. I'm going to click in the window. Now this has brought up the contour editor and we've got the presets. This is linear. We've also got cone and you can just go through these until you find one that you like. The one I've actually selected is this one, ring that looks pretty good now you can click on these and the whole thing with this is just move it around until you get the type of effect that you're after this is going to be the lighter areas this tends to operate in the darker tones as we can see they're just moving it across I like the way that's working there let's just lift that up like that and just move it around until you get an effect you like there isn't a right or wrong it will vary from font to font as well as I have discovered and I'll show you that in just a little while I'm going to take it into that area that looks pretty good just bringing this down like that great stuff incidentally if you don't like what you've done just press alt or option you'll notice cancel becomes reset just reset it there it is linear you can then go back to your ring or whichever one you've selected to work with and you can just quickly make some adjustments I'll just very very quickly do that yeah I like the way that's working let's click on OK how about a bit more gloss highlight mode screen we're going to change this to linear dodge that looks better still I'm going to come down to the opacity amount we're going to take the percentage up and I'm just going to click moving it across until we get a there it is there what have we got no oh, back a bit there 68 percent like the way that's working we got the shadow mode is uh, multiply just going to drop that down to that area he says gently bringing it up until that position there what have we got we got 32 right some other changes let's come to uh, yeah I've adjusted this let's just click on the depth I'm going to take the depth up into this position here 26 coming down to soften I'm just going to move that as we start to move this up you'll notice the edge is softening off there nicely that looks pretty good like that I'm going to leave it as it is we're going to click oh, one, one, one other thing clicking on the anti-aliased that just gets rid of any jaggedy edges that looks pretty good so far we're going to click OK to that there's our glossy gold text now I did say it varies from font to font and if I just double click I'll show you we've got our text back the other font I selected to work with was uh, where's it gone it's engraved uh, empty regular that's this one here and if I just click and you can see the way that font is much larger but again that gloss effects looks good but just use the bevel and emboss to, to you know, make any changes you want to let's just take this back to the way it was in fact all I need to do is just undo it and there we are right a reflection we're going to use command J control J we're going to duplicate our gold layer we've now got gold copy but let's just double click we're going to call this what it's going to be which is going to be a reflection 
right we don't need it to be a text layer we don't even need these here so what we're going to do is we're going to right click over the word reflection and we're going to select rasterize layer styles that has now converted it to a normal layer it is now just an image layer right for this we need to turn it upside down edit transform flip vertical will do that I'm going to press V on the keyboard which is going to give me the move tool I'm also going to hold down shift the reason why I'm going to hold down shift is because it keeps it 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 going from left or to right I'm going to release it here now with the move tool selected all I need to do is just press the downward facing arrow I'm going to take it into that area that looks pretty good like that for a reflection right let's go to filter let's go to blur let's go to Gaussian blur we're going to blur it off a little bit yeah that looks perfect what have we got we got eight pixels I'm going to click OK we're going to put in a layer mask we're going to come over to the toolbox. Yes, we've got the default colors, but we're going to pick up the gradient tool. This time changing it to the linear gradient. And if we come over here, I'm going to come about halfway up the text. I'm going to click down. I'm going to press and hold down shift. That's going to give me a nice straight line because I'm holding down shift. I'm going to take it to this area here, releasing it. That looks pretty good. Just going to drop the opacity down very, very slightly with this as well into that area brilliant stuff right let's just take a look at repositioning this I'm gonna got the reflection there that is highlighted gonna click on gold so they're both now highlighted I'm gonna press V to give me my move tool you can move that into this area here in fact what you can also do is use command T control T that gives you the transform tool and I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger just gonna take it up like that there and just dropping it down into that area double click into apply there it is job nearly done one little finishing touch we're going to put in a new empty layer I'm going to press B on the keyboard which is going to give me the brush tool I've got yes yeah, you can see a bit of a sparkly brush there if you just right click that brings up the brush panel exactly the same as clicking on there but I just find it easier to work here and all I've done is clicked on the gear cog and I've selected assorted brushes clicked on this clicked append and it's just added it to the list and there it is there down the bottom incidentally you might like to try these two I've uh, selected this one here and as you can see it's a very very small brush I'm going to take it up into size something like uh, that there would be pretty good around about 300 pixels bringing it out you can see it's actually facing down so I'm going to grab hold of this going to swing it round into this position in fact let's give it a little bit of an angle that would be pretty good like that pressing enter or return will remove that panel oops just notice the colors pressing D on the keyboard that restores the default pressing X will put the foreground color to white that would be a hand helping hand wouldn't it all right let's click down here one coming in there just dropping it down in size uh, he says as my voice starts to go don't you just love the hay fever season right just clicking down there looks pretty good like that perhaps just uh, one more sparkly bit here and there it is there's the finished image let's just finish off by putting in a levels adjustment layer and I'm just going to move this across that's going to darken down the entire picture into something like this you see a little bit of a spike there not surprising with the white we put in but I'm just going to move that in very very slightly there let's just adjust it down nice from that to that giving it a lot more bite there is our finished image go on and give it a try as I've said as we've been working our way through this it will depend on the font that you're using but you know just play with the bevel and emboss under that gradient map and it's surprising what you can actually pull out but go on give it a go until the next time it is happy imaging and take care